Hi, no worries. But, uh, aye, but um, before we get started, how, how are the all three of you doing? Yeah, good. All good to hear Yeah, all good. Uh, <laughs> here, been out of trouble. <laughs> I'm here. Yeah, yeah, doing good. Um, I've had a wee, I've had a wee break recently, you know, um, just taking some time out from a busy, you know, recording some new songs and stuff, but I think we're ready to get back at it. <laughs> get back there and start rocking again on stage. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a plan. Good stuff. And what we'll do is, uh, normally with everyone, I'll go right back to the very beginning. So I'll just ask the questions and all three of you can answer. Uh, just to confirm what we've got, Chris, is that Chris in the middle? Aye, yeah. that's it. It's all about Chris. And, sorry? <laughs> it's all about Chris. It's all about the lead singer. <laughs> nah, nah. I want to know who's, who's, who have we got on either side of Chris? Uh, I'm Kev, I'm drums. Kev on drums? Yeah, I'm Jason on the bass. There we go. See, it's not just about Chris, we've got, we've got Kevin <laughs> as well. Yeah, you, you'll hear during the interview, it will be very much about Chris, so... Shut <laughs> <laughs> It's a me and Joe. Yeah, I'm, I'm sensing ten, I'm sensing tension here. But no, no, he, he, he's got the nickname Axel for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I, I was kind of hoping it wasn't going to be another some kind of monster. <laughs> no, no, I'll be fine. <laughs> I've never pissed it off tonight, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what we do though is uh, go right back to the very beginning. I'll ask the questions all three of you can answer. So just to, to begin with, where were all three of you brought up? Where are you from? I'm Glasgow. Yep. Glasgow as well, yeah. I'm from East Kilbride. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> top of the <laughs> Where in Glasgow are you from though? Oh yeah, if we're going to go to Dev, I'm Torrance. So that's about, that's about a 20 minute drive outside the city centre. Right in the stick. Uh, yeah. Farm farmyard country. He's still right, just as far away. Yeah, yeah. But Jeez, he's still right. Uh, south side. Ooh. Uh, it's so mysterious, isn't it? Twice side of Glasgow. Kirkston. Well, the moment would be mysterious, it's fine. So, uh, see, all three of you were used into music from a very young age, like grown up, like really young. Yes. yes. Not for me, no. Not at all. <laughs> You, you were into music. Was Were you getting into your very early influences? Was that like from your parents or something? From my dad. I, the first album he ever gave me and my brothers was Paranoid by Black Sabbath. Right, so you've got a cool dad. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you've, you've at least got a cool dad that knows his music. Yep. Yeah, yeah he was very into his music. Couldn't play. Right. Tried to play the guitar, tried to play the piano. But couldn't play, but he had an ear for a song, an ear for a band. He can predict, he can predict the top ten week in week out when look that made a difference. Could he you know, predict singles rather than album sales and stuff? I would predict like uh, um, what would be in the top ten sort of thing. So yeah, a great year for music. Could he predict the six lucky numbers on a Saturday night? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. But I, I, I did. Like... I did and changed them. <laughs> <laughs> That's Jeez. a true story. You're getting a wee bit of an influence, musical influence from your dad, and it sounds like it's a pretty good starting point. Sure. Yeah, the other two, you not so much. But what age were all three of you when you normally you will get to an age where you discover your own musical taste? And so, what age were each of you when you discovered your own musical taste? And what type of bands were you first discovering that you were like, I really like this? 1980s, having guns and roses, upstate for destruction. <laughs> Jason's a lot older than us, we should point out, by the way, he's a lot older than us too. Um, for me, it would have been about 1999 with Tenacious D. <laughs> right, okay. That was the first, the first wow. kind of rock band that I listened yeah. to that sort of put me onto that road, uh, the likes of Metallica, Dio and all that stuff. But yeah. really, I really didn't start getting proper into music until I actually started playing drums, which was about high school, really. So. Mm. Right. Yeah, I'm about the same. I think I was about, uh, about 15 um, and if, I think first regular what was Red Hot Chili Peppers, by the way. Uh, but the first band that I was like, I mean, it was ACDT Live at Donington. That was the moment I, I watched that, and I was just like, I want to be like the guy. What year was that? Um, well, I watched the DVD probably <laughs> in like two thousand something. But what year was it that you were watching? Um, I would be fifteen. So what's that? That's almost. Quite years ago, 19 years ago, so Jeez. was it like 2002 or something like that? That was one in 1991. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> 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 I mean, in the street, yeah, I wonder if I like, I can see you. 
I was like, oh, what do you mean with that guy? <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm, I'm an oldie as well, so I'm probably more in, in, line, in line with Jason than the other yeah. two. Good but uh, age is overrated. But uh, yeah, I'll say all the bands from back then are a lot better than the bands nowadays. Yeah, to be honest. Far from us, yeah. <laughs> so see for it, see for each of you. Like um, so, so Kev, you're on drums, right? Was, yeah. was that the first instrument? Uh, no, I uh, failed the guitar first. I thought this is this is too hard, and I thought I could just get along with hitting finger sticks. It's a lot easier to play guitar. <laughs> so uh, yeah, try. I tried guitar first and then I just I switched on to drums and I've stuck with it since. Uh, Chris? Yeah, um, no, it was, it was guitar. Guitar all the way. There was a, a, a wee while where all of a sudden I tried to play bass. Uh, and, you know, and then I, and I saw sense in uh, a <laughs> couple of years. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was always guitar. Jason? Um, bass. Yeah, I approached it. I was at school and I got approached because I had long hair. Do I be a bass in the band? I can't play. Don't care. Just turn up and that's it. And then I get hooked. Aye. Yeah. And what about uh, vocals then? Was that something you started originally or was that something that came later on? Yeah, I used to be I used to be in a band, you know, a couple of bands in, it was probably about 22 or something like that, and it was a band that would try and sing and everyone would bully me and tell me I was rubbish at singing. Oh, uh, oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> but I think it was just that way, you know, like I tried the backing vocals and I got it wrong once, and then a- after that it was just a running joke, you know, Chris Rubbish. And I never really, I never really wanted to sing, and then when I started writing my own songs, probably when I was like 20, uh, 29, 30, sort of, I was like, well, um, if I, you know, I ha- literally have to because there was nobody else sort of to yeah. do it. And so, and I tried it, and, and I've actually, like, as long as I find something that's sort of right, the right range and it's my own songs, I can. I can actually sing them. So yes, singing. Yeah. Uh, singing's a weird one because obviously mm. all different instruments. You, you can go to lessons. You've mm. got friends. They play. They can. They can show you bits and pieces. You know, especially today, you can go online, YouTube, and there's a million lessons. But um, vocals is always is always the odd one, I think, because mm. as much as you can learn bits and pieces and and that. There's a huge part of it is just confidence, and you can't teach that. That's something you've either got or you don't have. And a lot of the time, it's whoever's brave enough to step in front of the microphone. And mm-hmm. as you see, it's a wee bit like, I suppose, when you're younger and you hear your recorded voice for the first time, you think, Christ, that does sound like that. And it's a wee <laughs> bit, you know, you're able to get used to your, your actual singing. And then, uh, as you say, you figure out, you know, what are you capable of actually doing, and you sort of stay within those parameters, and it's... It's pretty decent, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. So I think the the thing that probably helped, um, I think, because I was doing it myself, there was no one to really judge me, and I I kind of done it like a hundred times. You know what I mean? And I actually get a few good takes, and then you know, I was like, okay, uh, yeah, you know, I just it's, it's totally about confidence. Once you get a bit of confidence, that that makes all the difference. So give me a wee laugh here, and you. You might be might end up embarrassing yourselves in front of each other, but what was the first like professional concert that you ever attended? Mm. The Dog Summer Battlelands. What year was that? Nineteen eighty-eight or eighty-nine. <laughs> I wasn't even born. <laughs> <laughs> I probably wasn't born because I was first in eighty nine, so <laughs> Thanks, uh, mine was Tenacious D in 2006 Right, okay Where was that? One, uh, that was at the CCC I think, okay. yeah, I guess CCC, yeah um, I can't I think the first one I got really excited about Because uh, I got surprise tickets from It Franz Ferdinand, uh, CCC um, Supported by the Kaiser Chiefs I can't remember if I also saw Ramsey about that time. I can't remember what came first, but I was definitely more excited about the Franz Ferdinand one. But the Ramsey one, I look back on, I'm like, wow, that was, you know, the, the last time we actually done out before it got cancelled. Mm-hmm. But I didn't really appreciate the time, you know, we were too young. Uh, yeah. Obviously, when you're younger as well, you get, you know, Christmas time comes around. Mm. You get, presents from your parents or whatever you know it'll be like an album or a, or that but do you remember the first album you bought with your own money that you went into like HMV or wherever and actually bought it what was it? 
Uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers. I think I said that, yeah, Red Hot Chili Peppers, by the way. I think I bought the single first, by the way, the single. And then yeah. I think I will bought the album. Mine would have been White Snake 1987, Death Led with Hysteria, and After Destruction. Yeah, you just as very old. <laughs> what list? No. Mine would have been Green Day, <laughs> American Idiot. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> but that was the first album I bought, more money. <clears throat> Bad, no bad. So, uh, obviously, you're in a band at the moment together, but have, have you all played in bands previously as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've been in a band since I was a teenager. And have all the I mean, for me personally, no, I've tried. Have all the bands just ran their course as they normally do in, yeah. until it ends up yeah, this is, I think this is only the second band I played in that's doing original stuff. It's all been like rock cover bands I played in, apart from one right. of so. Yeah. If we fast forward, when, when did the band uh, actually start? Uh, last October. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's been about 18 months now. I think you joined was about last October, I think. Yeah. Uh, October or did you, was it something like an ad online that, how did the band actually get together? Yeah, it started with me doing like a, you know, Facebook uh, ad on, you know, Glasgow Musicians Groups. Um, I went through a couple of sort of trials with people, um, you know, um, that, you know, nobody was really wanting to take it half seriously, you know what I mean? It was more just like, you know, I took a couple of covers and then um, I think it was Kevin and Andy um, that, uh, that answered it, um, and we ended up, you know, I think, I think we went a couple of weeks, and then, you know, a couple of weeks later, Jason came, and then that was pretty much it, and after that, it was just been going full yeah. pill. Cool. Yeah, so. How did you, uh, how did you come up with the name? Because it's one of those things, having played in bands for years, and you have maybe know this yourself, that, you know, the amount of times a band, they can split up before they've even played a gig, because they can't agree on <laughs> and people start arguing and falling out and some people you know or it, it can be a horrible band name so how did you come up with the band name and then was there any alternatives that you're willing to share <laughs> um, well when I arrived but, the name was already established same yeah. with me so yeah so, I was joining in charge which I'm <laughs> quite happy with to be honest I just, so, I'm happy just to turn up and do his vote so uh, a bit <laughs> like a uh, a band name is can be a big thing, but the fact that I quite like the name in charge, to be honest, I've not yeah. no serious complaints about it. I think it was more like, I think I may have phrased the question like, you know, do you have any names you want to do? And I was like, what well, about in charge? And it was like, yeah, okay, let's do that. <laughs> um, the the kind of, the, the story behind it is that uh, I used to work in a kitchen washing dishes in East Kilbride, um yeah. called The Buyer, and we... Um, you know, whenever the whenever the chefs went out for a fag, it would be a running joke that they would come up to me and go, Chris, you're in charge. <laughs> that was the only person left in the kitchen. Um, and one of the bar staff thought that was hilarious, so it became like a running joke. Uh, he ended up getting a t-shirt made that said Chris Ray is in charge. Um, and then that was kind of like the whole, I think, I was like, there's not really a band called In Charge. You know, there's In Flames, there's, you know, and there was, I just basically thought it was a good. It was. It sounded good. Yeah, it's, you know, totally. It makes a statement. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those ones that. Um, I mean, it, so, it You know, it's a good name. Sounds perfectly fine. Sometimes I think too much thought can go into it, and, and sometimes mm-hmm. it's bad names. You know, they don't have to to really mean anything. You know, sometimes it's just. You know, even if you can get two random words and you just put them together, it sounds good. It looks cool if you've got like a logo or anything like that, but. You know, yeah. some I've seen bands fall out over trying to like name themselves something, and it's hilarious to watch. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. it feels good. I don't even know what else we would call ourselves. Like, if we had to, like, it would be, it would, it would probably, it, you know, Chris Ray, the backup player. Chris <laughs> 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 uh, Ray, no, I think, uh, yeah. I mean, it's just find a decent name, and that's yeah. it. You know, what I, I mean, it's something nobody else has used. That's one of the things I was trying to do. Is like. You know, try find something that people search for online. It will come up for you. Yeah. You know. So see, um, see with the band for songwriting. How do you go about doing that? Do you have a, a 
tried and tested method that you stick by or you know the Chris do you write the skeleton of a song and bring it to the guys do you just meet up in a jam room and go for it does everyone contribute riffs like what's how's how do you go about songwriting what's the ideas I stay as far away as possible from the songwriting. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, just, I, just, I, just, I do not get involved if I can, if I can help. I'm, I'm useless when it comes to that. If they need me to put a drum bit down, then absolutely fine. But anything else, just nah. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to happen. Yeah, I think you kept on that since day one. Yeah, just that I don't write songs. I don't you know? write songs. I don't do this. If you um, need me to do a drum bit, I'm there. But anything else, it's up to you guys. <laughs> I think it, it kind of started off that, you know, the way the band was formed is basically me looking for the band because I'd written a few songs myself and there's probably like five or six of them. There was like enough there to have a gig. So it started off as like, you know, um, all about Chris. Well, yeah, I've got these, <laughs> I've got these, <laughs> I've got these six songs left to do them, but then it was more like a kind of, you know, ba- Jason basically just does what he wants mm-hmm. on the bass and it sounds good. And it's the same kind of thing um, we can as well. I th- th- think the longer we've gone on, the more, Relax. The more comfortable yeah. we've got, you know, it's more like it doesn't have to be a certain way. It's just basically I write the sort of, as you said, the scale of the song, and then these guys make it like a, a much better version of what it would be. I mean, I, I think that's an actual process for it, to be honest with you, because then yeah. you, you got to put your own personality in when yeah. you play, or else there's no point. So, yeah. Chris, will come up with, Chris will come up with the lyrics and the is this working out and basically a chunk of a song but it's how you how you feel that song when you're playing it you've got to put your own stamp on it but you stay within the concept and the realms of yeah the structure and stuff yeah you know what I mean? I, all joking aside though you may be coming up with the, the, the skeleton of the song but you do trust the other two guys that you know yeah. Jason you're on bass um, Kev you're on drums so just you know I trust you that you know what you're doing Make the song sound better and go for yeah. it. Yeah, I think that's evolved over time more and more because you know when you're when you create a song and you get attached to it, it's very difficult to sort of let it go. You know what I mean? Um, but I think the more we've played together now, it's just sort of like the, the last song we wrote was like you know I wrote a demo, but then the way it's you know evolved and it's became now is really our own song. You know, mm-hmm. it's really very much the band's and. Um, yeah, exactly. So uh, it's getting. So I think now we're sort of evolving, you know, to be like writing as a group, you know. I mean, when I, we got together as, as the band was became a band, yeah. there was there was a body of work already there to work on. So there wasn't really a lot of um, there wasn't a lot of uh, oh that song. I've got this song. I've got this song. We had a body of work. Let's make them as best we can make them with the people that's in the room. Yeah get them to a, a really good standard where we, we can go out and gig and feel totally comfortable. So there wasn't a lot of kind of swabbling about who's writing a song or that. We had a body of work to work on and let's do it. And in fairness to Chris, Chris put the ad out, Chris created the band, Chris created the songs. They were good songs. There was, wasn't what you were sitting there going, yeah, they were good songs. They were... Yeah, I enjoy listening to them. And I know that I, I know where they came from, but they were good songs. They were solid. So there was there wasn't a lot of squabbling about who who was right and who wasn't. It, it was about let's make these songs the best we can do, and let's go out and entertain people. That's where I had, yeah. I came from. But I did say from the, the kick off, I'm the bass player. I might play things different from how you record it, but it will be in the realms of what you do. But I have to be able to express how I interpret the songs, and we didn't really deviate from that. It didn't really create a lot of problems. Mm. And then, as Chris was saying, as we get to know each other, because we didn't. Yeah. yeah. Guys jumping in the room and trusting each other. The trust is there. We know each other's strengths and weaknesses Aye. are. And we can work together. We got on all right. There's, I don't think we've had an argument. No, we haven't really. Not, Not yet. yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. But we can fun each other in, in, a, in a, a, a playful way. And everything's cool. So the trust builds from that. Mm. Do you know what I mean? We, we, we can have a laugh. We can be serious. We can take the mic to each other. Yeah, and the songs speak for themselves. Come and see us. You'll see that songs speak for themselves. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I think it's, a, it's a perfect mix right now. It's an absolute perfect mix, and I trust these two guys to do what they do. Yeah. It sounds like you know, ego aside, there's a good starting point. Mm. 
you bring another two guys in, finding the, the correct two guys to bring in mm. to, the, to the next level. Yes, definitely. Totally. I think that too, yeah. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. But you can you can you can write you know, you can play exactly the way you want, but you know, when you find the right people and you play to their strengths, as we said, um, then it just makes something a lot a lot more colourful and uh, and different, you know. Yeah, um, and uh, what are you like then in the studio? Because I know you've done a bit of recording. So, how mm. do you record? Do you have a, a recording process that suits you best? So, for example, does Kev do the drums first and do you layer everything on top, or do you do maybe a rhythm section first live? Or what, what, what way do you use work in the studio? Well, I'm always late. So yeah, the- he doesn't know. <laughs> he doesn't know what happens until yeah, the bass goes down. Like, it's just a mystery. The, to him. the last two times we've been in the studio, the drums have been recorded by the time Jason turned up. So. Yeah. Turns up right on time though. Yeah, right true. Nah, he turns up just as he's ready to step in. Um, but yeah, no, well, I think yeah, the, the we started. Um, I mean, I never get. Into, I think we started with of the drums. Me playing along to the drums just as a sort of guide. No sure. click track, so you know, um, which makes it a bit more difficult to record. But I think it kind of works for us in giving it maybe a little bit more of a life feel. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and and then obviously Jason comes in does um, does his bit and then yeah and then some of the guitars and the vocals so I've recorded all different formats I've recorded like as you've suggested drums and bass together mm. and recorded isolated and all the rest of it over the years so as long as I know where it's gone I'll I've got to accept one, one of those tricky ones I've, I've spoke to a few bands and there's, there's a lot of them that the problem they always encounter is, you know, when they're playing live on stage, they're bouncing off each other and, you know, whatever song they're playing, it, it goes to another level because they're feeding off the crowd. There's this, there's this energy about it and a lot of them struggle to then capture that when they go into recording. The recordings that they do are, are brilliant. The songs sound mm-hmm. great, mm-hmm. But, it, but they think there's something missing compared to when you hear the song in a live set up so it can be tricky that that's why there is you know lots of different ways of trying it and you know mm. you're not playing to a, a click so there's maybe more of a live feel to it as well mm. well that was one of the issues not an issue we had when we were recording the last time there I was recording the backing vocals and uh, Chris was like is that how you do it live and I went <laughs> no he went we'll do it how you do it live and I was like alright oh, okay cool so I was going like a maniac and then it just the yeah. outcome is so much better compared to the one before and, yeah <laughs> What was um what was your first couple of gigs like? Was it a hugging pipe? A hugging pipe was the Glasgow's the first one we played, yeah. Yeah. So that went quite well. I thought we would support um the This is where yes. my memory yeah. Uh, I some bad not 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 nice yeah. guys. They were they were really good. Um so much that so I can't remember their name. Uh, it'll come back to me. Um but we um and I think it went quite well. I think when I look back on it, I'm like, oh, I was pretty rubbish, you know, compared to like when you look at a back a year later, you go, oh man, yeah. we've done 10 gigs since there or something. And you're like, wow, the, di- the difference between then and now is just stark in terms of just, you know, um, the my, my vocals and my playing personally, probably. Um, and I think obviously as a band, I think as a band, we've been pretty tight from the start, but I think it's just got better and better. Um, you know, I've got a new guitar and a new setup and stuff since then, so it's definitely, it helps, you know, the live sound is a lot better. But I suppose you should, be, you should be trying to progress mm. and you, you should be sounding better, I suppose, as, as time goes on. You, yeah. you know, you, you're able to read each other better, you're more comfortable on stage, the songs are probably evolving as well. But see, for each of you, um, do you, do you prefer one to the other? So do you prefer recording, writing and recording to playing live, or do you prefer playing live? Playing gigs for me, definitely. No, I, I, I love it. It's, it's literally one of my favourite things to do is play your live. That great, it's brilliant. I'm kind of torn. I like, I love recording. Um, it's probably like 50 50 for me because I love the process of being in the studio and like listening to things that like kind of it's you know, you've not really heard it fully, and it's like, yeah. You know, you kind of have this image of your mind, and then when it comes through and it sounds amazing, you know, like our recordings have been um, been really good so far. And um, so, 
Um, yeah, it's probably maybe playing gigs probably slightly edged it, but recording's close, yeah. close thing for me. I think uh, I think ultimately gigging is always is what you want to be doing, but mm. I don't have to don't mind either or. I mean, the the recording process, the writing recording process allows you to kind of analyse your own play, yeah, see about what you're doing, and the then cool you put that, put that into yeah. the performance. I was going to say the cool thing with recording, and you might have this as a if you record a very rough demo of a song, mm. it's great to hold on to it. And then when the song's completely finished at the other end, if you compare the two, oh, it's yeah. amazing to see how, really? how it actually changed or or evolved with everybody else being involved. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's, it's really much the the way. Um, the way I done it as well when this when I started with basically during COVID I basically recorded a low load of what I thought were you know good mixes myself, yeah. um, uh, and I kind of done it myself and I got really into like on YouTube right, sound production and stuff and I was like right I'm going to do it all myself it's going to sound amazing and then I released some after a while and then uh, then when I went to the studio the first time it just blew my mind you know um, how much better it sounded like and it's hard yeah. to even really capture but it's just like the whole mix you know so it's like you know, it does cost a little bit of money, but in terms of what you get out of it and, you know, the amount of time you have to spend in to do it yourself as well, it's almost worth it, you know, to actually pay somebody to do it. Well, I understand completely what you're, what you're saying because I've done it probably similar. Yeah. And it was on YouTube, you know, like trying to get <laughs> hint tips uh, on the mixing part of it. I'm totally fine for recording. Yeah. Uh, and I can remember recording, mixing, and then uh, you listen to it back and you're like, this is shit. It's like the actual songs were good, but but the mix failed it. And eventually I was like, I put my hand in my pocket and I sent it off to someone that knows what they're actually doing and see comparing it like a, a proper mix and master compared mm-hmm. to your own attempt. It, it, it can it can ruin the tune if you don't take, you know, spend that wee bit of mm-hmm. extra time and, and get it sounding as best you can. But I know that you've, a single coming out 31st of May. Yep, that's right. Uh, I don't know your name it's called. Before yep. we talk about that, who came up with the artwork? Because I'm liking it. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I won't take full credit. I will <laughs> I would say there's a few apps out there that make yeah, a bad yeah, man. I mean, don't, don't speak with that. We cut that bit out. <laughs> we designed it ourselves. <laughs> we kind of just, we kind of, again, we're all kind of on the same page. Mm. We see we kind of well, Chris does a lot of the fairness, Chris does a lot of like work. Yeah. Um, but what he's come up with and what he's, he's saying, what do you think about this? Yeah. There's, you, if you're going to criticise or, or come up with something, you need to come up with something really, really good because it's like you're hitting it. Yeah. So, I don't, you know, I don't think. Like, why, why argue with something that doesn't? We had a conversation last year, and I'm not going to go too heavily into it, right? <laughs> uh, about artwork for a single and there was all this meet, 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 meet in the background so like, you know the one that's sitting labouring for hours and hours trying to pick an artwork or come up with concepts unless you're going to sit and do that let's just be quiet and yeah. let's just go let's get the song out let's mm-hmm. go do what we're doing and that's just how I feel if it's something I feel strongly that I don't like the idea of it then I'd say but yeah. like I said, everything's kind of, we kind of know what the band is, we kind of know what our target audience is, and the kind of artwork and the concepts that's surrounding the individual songs mm. have all been appropriate, and that's all, Chris. I, I don't think there's been once, it's not the jinxes, I don't think there's been one situation where you've came forward where like, I'm thinking this is the artwork for it, where I've went, no, nah, I hate it. Uh-huh. Every time I've been like, that's absolutely uh, spot on. It's perfect. 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 I came with like four ideas and like, right, which yeah, one's like, on, yeah. you know, and then that's what we go with. That's the sort of. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're all just too laid back for dra- any more drama, to be honest, <laughs> than we've already had. <laughs> I don't think it's drama. I think it's just that we understand what the band is. We yeah. understand what kind of audience we're trying to yeah. to resonate with, who we're trying to connect with, and all that kind of stuff that's coming out. That's that, Mark. So, what, so it's. And again, so Chris, sorry for us. Yes, but, <laughs> but in terms of, like, he puts, his, he puts everything into it, so yeah. he does deserve to be all about him. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it does sound, though, 
that you're for a relatively new band, it, it does sound like you've got your band dynamics correct because mm. and I, again, I've asked people this before. What makes the band work? And I don't mean in terms of success or anything like that, but mm. personally, I think if you've got three, four, five guys in a band, I, I think you need a leader, some someone that steers the ship. And I don't mean someone that dictates, but someone that, that knows the direction that this band is going in and the other guys in the band mm. trust them, that they get behind them, support them on their ideas. You know, everybody's got... Yeah a voice in the band, everyone can speak up, they can give their opinion, but I, I think a band does need someone to steer the ship. Would you probably agree with that? Yeah, 100%. Because, yeah. like, I mean, we, we were a four-piece at one point, and then we went down to a three-piece. Right. We were coming to the situation where we were like, right, do we, do we try and bring someone else in? Mm-hmm. Where we're basically going through the process that we have to get along with and make sure we're all gel, we can all joke about, he has to learn all the songs. I always decided if we can get along, just the three of us, we already know we work well together, we already know there's a good uh, base there, can we just go with it? And that's what's happened with us. So, Thanks, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the only compliment you're getting. No, I, I, mean, I agree, and I think yeah, every team needs a captain or a leader, you know, I mean, just to, and if you have too many people, you argue about everything, you know what yeah. I mean? Which is kind of like, and I think the way it started as well had a clear sort of direction and sound for the band, you know, because I wrote a few songs and they all kind of sounded, you know, I kind of knew what I wanted. I wanted something that was like, you know, something that people can sing along to, but it's, yeah. it's rocky, you know, and, and you know, it's not going to, it's going to, it probably will appeal to a large audience. It's not like I'm trying to appeal to a large audience. It's just like something that I want to listen to, basically like Guns N' Roses, you know, Metallica, all these great bands, I'm just like, you know, that's kind of, um, and, but it would kind of be something that, its own. Um, but yeah, no, I'd, I'd agree, I think, the way, the way it works. I, you know, I do, you know, I, I put a lot of work in, but also these guys have never, never let us down in terms of, they, they show up from day one. Um, any gig we do, it's like right up for everything, um, even recording, so um, it works. Yeah, and we had spoke about artwork there. So here's a question for the three of you as well. And um, obviously, myself and, and Jason are probably of the same sort of era, but it still kind of uh, will resonate with everyone. But you remember back in the day that you would go as a young teenager. You'd go into when they still had music shops that you could actually go to. Fancy <laughs> mega <laughs> I, I, remember remember yeah, I remember that as well. We're not going to do it. Because it used to be HFB and Virgin Mexico used to always be right beside that big one that became like, it was a free store one and became yeah, as big as HFB. That was Virgin Mexico right, as well. But you, but so I do remember, thank you very much. You may remember the building, but <laughs> we're talking about you won't remember. You don't understand. No, we're too young. <laughs> the question I had was obviously you remember going into the shop and you know, you'd go to the, the section that you want to go to and you'd be flicking through the CDs and uh, you know, looking maybe looking for new stuff. And there's there's times where you would purchase a CD, yeah. having heard the band, having never heard any of the songs of that, but you purchased it simply based on the album cover. That that's a cool album cover. Mm-hmm. I'm going to buy that. And then you hope mm-hmm. when you get home that that it's you know that it. That's yeah. yeah. That's that's right. Right. And then. What's happened is the way the music business has changed across the years, the way that music is accessed now, you've got streaming, you've got downloading. Is artwork still as important in your opinion? Yeah, it's big. I, I think, think it, it makes a statement. I mean, especially vinyl now. Yeah, because like, yeah, vinyl's come. Like <laughs> my, my fiancé, uh, Rachel, who was at a... Um, you might listen to this through that gig there night with mum and uh, the the artist whose name I will um, will come back to me um, a blue blamange blamange um, <laughs> you know so quite quite big from from English church so the the artwork was literally a washing basket a pink washing basket um, mm-hmm. and it was kind of made up to be like a washing thing uh, like inside it was like blue coloured vinyl and mm-hmm. Um, I think the, the artwork was like it was like it was really it was really kind of striking and I was like if I saw that you know it sounds, it sounds like it isn't but you know it was really kind of a really great example of 
um, someone taking all that seriously. And, you know, yeah. Um, so I think now, because of vinyl and also people, it's making a comeback, you know, some people, they're like quite expensive, like 30, 40 pounds or something. You know, it's kind of like a almost premium product now. Yeah. Um, this, you know, um, and even online, um, if you're going through Spotify, say, and obviously you've got all these algorithmic playlists, um, most of the time it'll probably come on, but occasionally if people are looking and they see like, Something that's bright and kind of striking, even if it's small, kind of draws your attention. So anything that's getting attention is probably good. I think the difference between now and then is when we were picking our albums up, we didn't get a preview. That's what can hear for us. Yeah. We had to we had to take that jump or that leap of faith. Whereas now you can find out having a bit of band before they release the single. Yeah. So we did we it was a bit more of a uh, treasure and trunk to find a band that you actually that you would listen and go, oh, that's great, and then you would delve into their, their back history and mm. who were their influences, and then that, this tree of knowledge opens up with all the bands that connect but, these people. Yeah. Yeah. It's, a, it's a funny question because it, 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 it does, depending on who you're asking, and I've I done, I done another uh, podcast episode not too long ago, and I got the complete opposite answer. They, they thought that artwork was pretty much irrelevant. <laughs> And it depends. Yeah. On, maybe it depends on the age of the person or the the, the mm. type of band. Me personally, I still think it's it, it, it's a great thing. Um, mm. I can remember speaking with my dad, for example. He, you know, he was obviously born in the fifties, right? So he would have been a teenager going into the sort of late sixties into the seventies. Mm. He said, you know, starting work in Glasgow, going walking along Sucky Hall Street, you'd go to a record store. And he says the coolest thing you could do would be to, to purchase a vinyl and you'd, you'd go home on the bus and you've got the vinyl under your arm so everybody can see it. And, and it's almost like an advertising, the way you would wear a band t-shirt nowadays. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, it blows my up that, that people don't consider it important, but yeah. I don't think that's a generation thing because I just think it, you know, if you've got the, cool, the good songs, you want something cool to look at as well. It, it, it's just, it's part of the product. Well, you would certainly read the album cover front of to course. back, back to front as you listen to it and read the lyrics yeah. and look at the pictures. Because we didn't have like thousands of pictures online that you could sit and read the total by by other band. You'd have to wait for more, another album or another single or there somebody to release a book about them once they get to a certain level of fame. You, yeah. You've got all that instantly now. We, we didn't have that. Well, you yeah. could, and I, I, I feel like Iron Maiden wedding. Oh, yeah. He's on every single album. <laughs> yeah, he became a mascot and he became a calling point of the band by being on every album. Yeah, yeah I think so. yeah, part, part of it as well, I think the, the artwork should represent the song in terms of like, so the, I don't know name one, um, the story behind that song, I remember Jason, the first thing he said is like, it, we should have like a driving video, you know, because it's fast <laughs> and it's just kind of got that feel where you kind of want it. If you're in your car, you're probably going to drive faster. Um, yeah. Part of this, I mean, I won't go into detail in the story because um, it may land me in trouble. But the, <laughs> uh, <laughs> the <laughs> no, the, but the, it, it was written after I sort of, you know, I was literally driving. Part of the story is me driving somewhere, so it's more like a kind of what I was like. The the cover was just like it was just like you're driving towards the abyss, you know, the chaos. So the yeah. song. I think that song basically is just chaos, <laughs> which is great life. As soon as I, I, when I listened back to the song, and I, I remember hearing like, Chris's original recordings, but I think it's a lot stronger, a lot more powerful now. Mm, totally. Um, but that's what I hear it, because I, there was another reason why I pitched this idea, but they'll, but whatever. It's just like ride <laughs> car racing, indie, but, you know what I mean, like just fast cars and all that sort of stuff. It was also you get shooting another video to be fair, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I see. I mean I, I, I just like the intro I just see a, a car speeding off, do you know what I mean? And then there's a stop in it. And I yeah. said to my, this is what mm-hmm. I see when this comes kicks back in. It's like the you know, dry racing is where they're revving their engines up and the wheels are spinning and then they go. That's what yeah. I see when I, when I yeah. see that song. I'm a bit more experienced and maturer than them, you know. Yeah, that's what we'll call it. <laughs> it's a bit like the, the Metallica song Fuel. You know, totally. I think it's just yeah. about 
of, of fast cars, but the whole video that starts with the wheel spinning, then it's just. Mm-hmm. Our Metallica, if you want us to come and support you, you know, just, just say the word, we'll be there. Just hey, see the if, if anyone supports Metallica, it's going to be me first. <laughs> <laughs> see, but see the question you asked previously about going and buying an album cover and stuff like that. I kind of went sorry that because we only had our imaginations. There was no like, music yeah. videos. Do you know what I mean? The first music video was Dire Straits, do you know what I mean? We didn't have that, the early part of the music we would listen to. It's what you've you seen on top of the pops or whatever. So we had to use our imaginations and get inside the song and, and mm. kind of build up our own interpretations of what they're talking about. The other, thing you'll, the other thing that you'll remember as well, Jason, is back then, you know, you didn't have the internet, you know, you didn't have mm. music television or that. So... If you had 12 albums, 12 CDs, cassettes, whatever it was, if you had them, that's what you had to listen to, unless you maybe got a copy of a, another album from a friend or that, but Never you, would, you would know those albums. <laughs> you would know them inside out. Yes. Because that's all you would listen to. And back then, if you've got an album that's got 10 songs in it, it mattered what the track mm-hmm. listing was. That you understand why this was the first song, which then led mm-hmm. into the second song, which went to the third That's one. It. You understand yeah. why the, this was the last pop album, and some of that is, or a lot of that, is lost now. Yeah. yeah, I'm glad that there's a lot of bands that it's still something that they think of when they're making it. Yeah, yeah, I think I get what you're saying. Yeah, they're on an order kind of takes you. It's again, it's an individual journey, isn't it? So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think when I have, you know, because we, we don't have an album out, um, but I think what we've done now, there will be an album, you know, and it will have a story to it, you know, because, you know, and I think that story will obviously depend, you know, it may depend on what even happens in the next six months because there's all, because we don't have enough songs yet to have an album. <laughs> and we could release one, people probably feel a bit shortchanged. Yeah, I'd say so. Um, but, you know, uh, but... Suppose you've got to think, though, that, you know, you're saying if you're going to do an album in the future, you know, it'll have a story and it'll maybe have all those elements we've just spoke about. You know, you've got a certain track order. Yeah. I suppose you accept in this day and age that there will also be people that will not listen to it start to finish. They will listen to the songs. And that's simply just the world that we live in now. Yeah, um, totally. I think that's one of the reasons why we've been down the road that we're doing is like we've recorded like three songs and we're going to release them one by one rather than all at once because the the power of the album's away. Yeah. 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 Um, hence the reason why ticket prices are through the roof because a band can't make money off the album sales anymore. Yeah. That's why your T-shirts and your merch is all shot on price because that's how they generate the extra revenue. Because, yeah, people will connect with the song, people will listen to the song, people will download it, blah de blah blah but the power of the song is no longer there. It's, it's it's the performance and what can a band offer that's a bit individual that somebody will purchase at the gig. Like t shirts. That's why you get like instead of one or two t shirts, you've got like ten t shirts. You get yeah. stickers, you've got all key rings, you've got beer mats, you've got everything. I suppose the other cool thing as well though, if mm. initially if you're focusing on singles or maybe an EP, you know, you can put your full effort effort into those songs, whereas if, if you're thinking, I've got 10 songs to do, the the likelihood is it's not going to be 10 bellers. There's, there's going to be a few bellers in there that you don't realise at the start, whereas you know you can focus a lot more on just singles and EPs to start with, and it also gets your music out there, it gets the band known, so it's a good sort of stepping stone. Mm, definitely. Yeah, I think if you want to... You know, as well as the budget of it, you know, like if you want to do an album and you want it to sound decent, you know, 10 songs is a lot of money um, and a lot of time. Um, and the, the beauty of it, I guess, is because we've done like three at a time, we can take three days and we can do three songs. And then it really kind of turns out the best it could probably be. Um, and then you also, you have, you know, if you release singles, you know, you have, you have uh, whatever, a month or two to promote it and you can tie it into gigs and you know um, it's just it's like you know going bit by bit if you're a new what I'd say that if you're a new band then it's, it's probably the way to go 
if you are a big fan, then I think you know it does probably doesn't matter as much. But um, yeah. when you have the money to record an album, then yeah. I think you probably should. But I think until we kind of get to the stage where people are saying when's the album coming, you know, then that's probably going to be the thing that that drives it. And so we will actually be able to listen to it when we get out. Because I have been, yeah. you know, I know people that have released albums and. And, you know, it's just, um, and it's it's not, it's great music, but not as many people are listening to it as it should be. Yeah. You know, um, because it's all just at once, it's almost overwhelming. It's a very sort of, if you're one at a time, we can just focus on promoting that alone and just yeah. pushing in people's face again. Because as I said, we've got three songs recorded and uh, there's a couple of my mates that have heard one of them and they, that's the one that they really want to hear. I was like, well, we're releasing that last year. We just need to listen to the first two first. I'm going to be putting them in your face first before you get the one you want. The great thing, I've got, I've got a friend who, who spent the last, it felt like years, but it was probably like a year recording his first album. Mm. Uh, done it all properly, bit by bit, and it, it took forever. Or it felt like it took forever because I was always asking, how's it going? And, it, you know, it's still getting worked on. But eventually he got out and, you know, he's obviously stream, put it on streaming platforms, that, you know, been able to download it. But he did get a batch of CDs made because, you know, there's still something cool about being able to hold it in your hand and go, I mm-hmm. made it. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't until he got the CDs through. You know, he'd had obviously the final mix, went away and got them mastered, got the CDs back. He just realised he didn't have a CD player. <laughs> <laughs> just put it in a frame, stick it in the wall. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So mm-hmm. we're, all, we're still in the first half of 2024. So what's the plans for the rest of the year for the band? Mm-hmm. Uh, got a couple of gigs. So we've got one coming up in the 2nd of June. Um, our pal, my pal, um, Darren's record shop in Dumbarton. It's called Line of Defence. Records. Um, it's just opened up. It's probably two, three months, two, a couple of months old, something like that. Um, they've never had a gig before, so this will be the first one. Um, we're probably going to, you know, it's probably going to be a sellout because there's about keen fit about twenty people in it. <laughs> um, so we'll see how it goes. But yeah, um, that that should be fun. Uh, and then we've got a couple more that we're, we're not announcing yet, but um, that will be coming. Um, We'll hopefully just get a bit a couple more gigs to the States, especially Glasgow ones because like we've played as I said we've probably played more gigs outside the Glasgow than in Glasgow and being a Glasgow band you, you, so hopefully we can get a couple more sort of bigger ones at Glasgow and play that because as we were saying before we came on like over the last few months the followers and all that we're getting a lot more followers Glasgow based and all that so a lot more people are finding out about us so hopefully we can get the numbers up and get a pretty big, big Glasgow gig to do yeah yeah, I think the um, I've got a couple more singles, so yeah, I don't know. If, we'll see. We'll see how the songwriting goes as well. You know, we we'll try try to get a few more songs written, hopefully, um, and then any gigs. Yeah, uh, even even charge gigs. album pending twenty twenty five. We'll aim for that just now. Tour, <laughs> tour of the world. After yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> it's just I love the profile and, and get better gigs. I with. Better people bands. want to play with better yeah. bands, a better higher caliber of band helps promote your overall sound, your overall look. Yeah. That sounds good in the band. You I mean if you're if you're getting support slots with a band that's kind of regarded as the big thing in your local area, then that boosts your profile. Yeah, definitely. Um I've been quite fortunate over the years to kind of be in a situation where I have played gigs with other bands with these set bands. And it does, you pick up two or two other people that come to your gig the next thing, that turns into four. I mean, that's, that's how it works, but you need to be able to put something out there and stuff like that. But it's kind of difficult to kind of... I was in a situation where we forked out money for T-shirts and CDs and nobody knew who we were. And then mm-hmm. by the time people knew who we were, there was none left. You know what I mean? But mm-hmm. it's, it's all finances, that's the problem. Uh-huh. So... Up to this point, we've been quite serious, lots of technical chit chat and stuff about the band. So before we finish up, we're going to I'm going to ask you some fun questions. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So again, it's for each of you. So for each of you, we'll start with, with Kev since he's on this side of my screen. Uh, imagine you could go back in time. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Go anywhere in the world. 
What's the one gig or concert you wish you could have attended and witnessed? Queen at Life Aid. Uh, that's a good one. Yeah. Easy, easy find. There's, uh, there's always been, you, you know, you get asked, like, bands you've always wanted to see and stuff like that. I've been fortunate enough that even though I listen to bands from Banks and they're obviously still touring this day. So I've managed to get quite a lot of my boy. I managed to get more head off my buckle, which I was delighted about. I've only ever seen them once. Mm-hmm. But there, there's always one where I might have ended because obviously it's definitely seen Freddie the Queen. Nothing against too silly to say. Is it Adam Lambert? It? Adam Lambert, yeah. He, he's good, but he's not Freddie. You know what I mean? Cool. And like, and they're 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 charging. Like, so I think the last time they were here was like 180 quid a ticket or something. I was like, I'd maybe pay that if it was Queen of Freddy, but it's not the same. But yeah, I'd go Queen of Life Aid, 100. percent I have to say before the rest of his answer, that's been the most um, generic one. Yeah, yeah. Well, I can imagine it would be because it's like it's it's one of those where you you know, you've never given to seen a bad word about it. <laughs> Self. Um, that is it's very difficult. Um the there's so many, but to us I think the one where I'm like, oh I wish I'd seen that probably because I saw them after the fact and then kinda wish I'd saw them before would have been probably and I said probably isn't a specific gig, but it probably would have been Red Hot Chili Peppers um when they had John and they were uh, the done by the album. I'm sure they were in Glasgow. And I remember seeing them play in bad, you know, um I wasn't there. Um always said I didn't really know what was on it. I, you know, I somehow missed it. But like just that whole sound of that album for some reason so that really kind of and probably because it was the first album I bought, you know, kind of sentimental reason. Um although there's probably other gigs where I could there's so many I could think of, but that one springs to mind. Jason? Can I give a few? <laughs> I didn't get you get pick one. <laughs> but pick one. I didn't get a one and one only. Can I know? But and it's not going to be the answer you think. Guns and Roses at the Marquee London, the original lineup when they were just hitting proper proper. And this is a personal trauma for me. I knocked back tickets to see Pearl Jam at the original Cat House in Glasgow, mm-hmm. not knowing who they were. Back in they the best they got in nineteen eighty two or something like that. Nineteen ninety one, ninety two. And I uh, went, ah, who are they, whatever. You were to know. <laughs> and then I scrambled and scrambled and scrambled to get tickets. They, they my friends went to see it and liked to rub it in my face. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, I don't I think, want, I, it's not the big gigs that I'd go for, it's like the original members. So, why'd you regret that? Because you did see it at the time. Too, I was too young to go and see Guns N' Roses at the Marquee mm. in London. I was, I was too young. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's the original, original five at the... Peak. They sort of believe the peak, peak of the best. Believe that the peak uh, at the just before they hit hit it big, taking on the world as it's yeah. here. Aye, the raw, just pure energy, pure raw. Here's your statement, bang, yeah. um, and yeah, that's quite a good one. Pearl Jam, because it's Pearl Jam. <laughs> yeah, that, that would have been that would have been cool. So uh, we'll go back to Kev now. So Kev. You've got a dead body in the boot of your car. Oh, Jesus. Right. <laughs> that is turned sinister. <laughs> it's four o'clock in the morning and you need to dispose of this body. Yeah. No, que- no questions asked. Uh-huh. Which of the other men are you going to get? I think I'd want to do 100%, Jason. <laughs> there is a reason for that. Yeah, there is a good reason for it. <laughs> I was a stonemason for 32 years of- so I've got contacts in the He's got contacts in the business. We can get to dispose of that, no problem. Boom. Guess that you would you would obviously pick uh, Jason as well then. Yeah, I think I would. Yeah, probably would. To that knowledge. Now it's a tough one, Jason. And Jason, would you just skip the other two and do it yourself? Do it yourself. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's got a van. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Plus, I wouldn't even question. I'd just be like, what are we doing? Yeah, okay, cool. He yeah. <laughs> has things. Yeah, exactly. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Here's a question then for each of you as well. There's been, as you know, millions and millions of amazing songs that have been written and recorded over the years. Yeah. For each of you, what's the one song you wish that you could have been in the recording studio to witness it actually being recorded? Such a good one. I've thought this so many times. I'm, well. um, I'm probably saying I'm going to do my answers the same. Uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. Uh, Simply because I would just want to know what the was going on in Freddie's head when he came together all that. Just like, it's just so, especially the middle bit, it's just so mad. 
you say, well, well, must, what goes through your head to think, I'm going to put this idea onto paper and do this as a song? It uh, must have just been crazy. I don't think the rest of the band knew what was happening no, either. No, 100%. <laughs> no. Mm. Chris? Um, you know, there's so many. Um, the one that immediately sprung to mind there was Comfortably Numb. Um, if I was there when David Gilmore played that solo, you know what I mean? Uh, I'm just like, how would that sound? I probably would have just died, you know. <laughs> Um, and I would have just the body yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh there's so many I'm going to say Koshi's by Audio Slate because th- that song came out I was going to go with Rocket I'll get you something with up in it well something <laughs> but, but that song came out for me when rock music was quite bland and then mm. there was this and I've seen Soundgarden and I've listened to Soundgarden. Uh, uh, unfortunately, I've got to see Rage, but there's all bands like Rage Against yeah. Dreams' first album. I played on loop for a year, solid. Just constantly turn the cassette around and play it again, turn the cassette around and play it again. Uh, but when that came out, the merging of those two bands that I grew up listening to, and music was pretty bland yeah. for me. I was really, I was still, I wasn't buying new music. I was listening to what I already had, and then this. Noise appeared, I'm going, what the actual? And mm. so I'm going to pick that. And <laughs> Rocket Queen. Fair way, I wouldn't that be a second one, yeah. Oh, yeah, that would be it. And then, uh, last question for each of you um, Mount Rushmore, who is your four either bands or musicians? Who is the four for yourself are uh, just perfection? Go go bands. Um, you go first, Kev, because you're not. Unless you can't think. Nah, Jen. I, I, there's two are up there straight away. For if for, for Tolly, for me personally, so Queen are up there. Yep. And then the Foo Fighters. Mm. The Spe- Foo Fighters, especially for me, for drumming wise, because like Dave Grohl and Taylor Hawkins are just massive. I mean, I'm scarred with Taylor Hawkins for life now. I've got this on my hand, so he's <laughs> he follows me everywhere. Um, so Queen, Foo Fighters. Um, after that. I'm, I'm probably struggling to be honest. Um, I mean, I could sit. You can name off. I mean, you, you take famous from so many different bands. Like, see, see, honestly, if you Betty Clyro, nah, I don't think they get on the Mount Rushmore. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm going to get slaughtered for this. I have to put one band up there because they are my guilty pleasure, and I absolutely love them. They're the greatest oh. pop band ever, and it's ABBA. ABBA are up there. They go on Mount Rushmore, <laughs> and I think I'll finish off with. Again, because me personally, I'm going to put Dave Grohl up there on his own. I'll well, say the two appearances. Yeah, he gets, two, he gets double appearances, I'm going to say. Right, Chris, go. Um, I, so, number one, ACDC. Okay. Um, then, then it becomes difficult. I'll probably say Chris Cornell on yep. his own because I love his voice. Um, then, uh, again, difficult, but... Um, Let's go the Wu Tang Clan and um, and uh, next uh, I'll do one more. It's probably going to be something Kill Switch Engage with, with Howard Jones and the lineup. Okay, Jason. The song would probably get an honourable mention as well. I forgot about them, but they're they nobody really knows who they are. So they're just a pirate metal band. So they they get an honourable mention as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to pick bands, I'm going to pick individuals, but they're in bands. So it'll be Cliff Burton, yep. Duffy Fagan, mm-hmm. John Paul Jones. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do all these guys have in common? <laughs> Jason Newstead. <laughs> no, that's crazy. No, I didn't even mention so, Metallica. So, well. so, so, oh, so, yeah. so you can put all them in as their bands and as individual influences of why I have Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that's what gave you the man. Hey. <laughs> Chris, Jason, thank you so much for coming and chatting to me. Uh, for having for having us. It's been a pleasure. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys have got coming out. If anybody's watching this and uh, they're, they're interested in your stuff, you are on social media. Yep. Uh, you can, get, uh, you can get, uh, gig dates, merchandise. There's a uh, link online. You can go and check out your music videos. There's everything there, so be sure to check it out and uh, mm-hmm. and look you up on social media as well. But uh, I wish you all the success in the future and I'll keep a wee eye out. I'm only through in Falkirk, so I'll pop through for a for a gig and cheer you on. Thank you. Thank you.
We'll get, yeah. we'll get you on the guest list, don't worry. What's, what's the name of your band, by the way? My band? Yeah. Uh, I've got two at the now. There's one one called Stillway, and there's one called The Carnival Dogs. Cool. Right. Okay. So one, of, one of them is like... Uh, the Carnival Dogs is like a... Well, I'm maybe not the one to say it, but in my head it's, it's like a combination of... Metallica, Therapy, okay. like Pearl Jam, like that kind of kind mm. of uh, sound, and then the other one is completely the the other way, and it's probably more like. Um, do you remember a band called The Laz? Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, yes there's a band, band called White Buffalo, who the music was used for Sons of Anarchy. Like it's mm. like a quick kind of like quite chilled out. Um, mm. Not too complicated, but super catchy. So I've kind of got the two on the go because I, I love the rock metal stuff, but I also love the, the chilled out stuff as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why don't we try and get the gig together? I've just started jamming with a new drummer. We had our first jam session last week. Uh, so it's in the, the early stages, but he's also a rocker like myself. So we're not actually sure which band do we actually want to sort of go with. Yeah. So we're going to try. We've, we've tried jamming the Stillway stuff. I think we're going to maybe try jamming the Carnival Dog stuff, and we'll see which one comes out. The, the Stillway one's relatively new. There's three different EPs out, but the Carnival Dog ones has been going to go longer. So there's three albums out. Yeah, you can have a Nice. Yeah, yeah. Sounds good. Mate. Uh, I'll send you the the, the, the the stuff over and you can hear the terrible mixes that are done but hopefully, <laughs> hopefully appreciate the songs at least yeah definitely sounds like fun but um, uh, thank you John and I'll, I'll keep a wee eye out uh, and I wish you all the luck in the future as well thanks very much thank you thank you cheers man right. nice thank you thank you cheers. Cheers. Bye. Bye.